Hello everyone, this is Carrie with Everwood Creations. Today, we are going to look at the Trace Bitmap tool and ways that I clean up the vectors that it produces for me. I also put on a new feature for this video that shows my keystrokes as I'm doing them. Let me know what you think. Obviously, having a nice big simple picture with dark clear lines will produce the best results, but sometimes that's just not an option for a project you're working on. In those cases, we will need to do a bit more work. First, let's talk about the Trace Bitmap tool itself. It is a very handy tool that allows you to create a vector by tracing an imported image. Now, despite its name, it does have the ability to trace image types other than bitmaps. I believe that it can trace bitmaps, extension.bmp, JPEGs, extension.jpg or .jpeg, GIFs or GIFs if you prefer, don't come at me, which is graphics interchange format.gif, TIFF, extension.tif or .tiff, or pings.png. These are the file types that can be imported using the import bitmap tool. I have, on occasion, had one of these file types not import correctly. When this happens, I pull the image into an image editing software and resave it, and generally that fixes whatever the problem is. Once the image is imported, we go to the Trace Bitmap tool, where we have a few options. An important part of creating clean vectors is getting a good trace, which can save you time down the road. Once in the tool, you can select color or black and white while tracing. Which you choose will be determined by your image. If the image is already black and white, then the choice is obvious. But there are times when you can use the black and white option even for colored images. The software will then convert the image to black and white and then trace the result. For example, this I Ching photo has many different variations in color, but if I select the black and white option, it allows me to trace just the shape more easily. Using the color option allows you to select only certain colors to trace. This can be a great way to trace only certain parts, like maybe the black outline of a picture. For example, this mermaid has many colors, but if I am only after the outline, I can lower the number of colors to let's say seven, then I can select the dark brown that is the outline color and trace only that. This gets the true outline of the mermaid as opposed to the black and white option that would include all the darker colors like the tail. Now let's get to the other tracing options down here. Corner fit allows you to determine how tightly it will trace around the corners. Mine defaults to 82% tight, which works pretty well for most things. But if you have sharp corners in your image that you wish to preserve, you'll want to bump it up to 100%. If you prefer nice rounded corners or like to soften jagged lines, then you may want to lower it. Here's the difference in Miss Brown's eyes with the two extremes of corner fit options. The one on the left has 0% corner fit, while the one on the right has 100% corner fit. Keep in mind when choosing that the size of the bit you are using can come into play if it is an inside cut. Moving on to noise filter which will try to help reduce the tracing of artifacts from the image. It defaults to two, which is a pretty precise tracing and will likely include artifacts like you can see on my mermaid here. All of these shapes outside of the line are traced artifacts from the image. As I step up the noise filter, you will see these artifacts disappear. The only drawback here is that sometimes it ends up taking out parts of the image you wanted to include. See how the streaks in the mermaid's hair are eliminated as I take the filter all the way up to 10? So you'll want to check all the details of your image before you settle on the noise filter level to use. The next section is bitmap fading, which simply changes the prominence of your image and doesn't affect your resulting vector at all. Now that we have the best tracing we can start with, we'll look at some ways to further clean up the vectors we have created. I'm going to include footage of three different projects to give you examples of the techniques I'm talking about. The first thing I always do is delete any artifacts we weren't able to get rid of with the noise filter. Looking at the image closely, you can usually find these rogue shapes easily enough. 
It gets more complicated with more detailed images, but it is well worth the time it takes to find these shapes and delete them. Once I have found one, and I've made sure my vector is not grouped, I just use the selector tool to highlight it and hit the delete key. If you only have a few prominent lines in your vector, but a lot of artifacts, an easier method is to highlight everything, then hold down the shift key to deselect the lines you wish to keep. Now all those artifacts are highlighted, and hitting the delete key will erase them all in one fell swoop. You can also do this in sections for slightly more complicated designs, like I did here. Keep in mind that lassoing with your pointer, starting in the upper left corner and dragging down, means that you will only select things entirely contained within your lasso. Starting the lasso from the upper right corner selects anything your lasso touches. This means that lassoing from the left is another good way to select all those tiny artifacts without selecting your main piece. A problem that becomes obvious fairly quickly is if a vector doesn't have straight lines where it is supposed to. This generally happens because there are extra nodes along the line. In node editing mode, you can delete these nodes using the D key or right clicking and selecting delete from the menu. Now you have a straight line between the two end nodes. If there are several nodes creating the problem, you can lasso them and delete them all at once. You may also want to make sure your end nodes are in the right place for the line to be perfectly straight. An easy way to make sure of this is to use guides. A guide is just a line that gives you a visual straight line across the material without actually adding a vector. It can be really helpful in placing things precisely where you want on the material, and for making sure things line up properly with each other. To use a guide, simply click and hold on the ruler at the top or the side. Now drag the guide to where you want it placed. You can move it later if you need to. I'll use a guide to help me straighten this piece of my I Ching diagram. Now that I'm happy with it, I'll just grab the same guide and move it to the other side to align it as well. You can do that or add an additional guide if you want to keep the other for reference or later use. You can turn the guides on and off by going to the View menu, then to Guide Lines and clicking on Guides Visible. Once you're finished, the same menu has a Delete All Guides option to clear your space. If you are wanting to line up things that aren't on the 90 degree angles, you can always create your own line to use as a guide, like I have done here. I'll use it to snap my corners and then just delete it when I'm done. With lines that aren't supposed to be perfectly straight, sometimes a simple moving or smoothing of the points is all that is needed to help refine your vector. To do this, just enter node editing mode and click and drag the nodes to line up better with the picture below it. If smoothing is in order, just right click on the node of the point that needs adjusting and select smooth point, or you could just put your cursor over it and hit the S key. Many times it's not quite as easy as just adjusting a few nodes and you'll need to replace entire sections of your vector. This tends to be especially true for circles. If you have a circle that is a bit wonky, chances are replacing it completely is your best option. I like to first check the size of the circle I'm replacing to get me in the ballpark, then click the Draw Circle tool and make a circle of the right size. Now you can place it by hand over the old circle, or you can select the new circle, hold down Shift, and then select the circle you are replacing. By using the Centering tool, or Align Selected Objects tool, as it's formally known, you can go here to the Align to Selection section and hit Center. This will line up the center of your new circle with the center of your old one. Once you are happy with the placement, you can just select the old circle and hit Delete. This works well for whole shapes, but oftentimes you have curves that need correcting. Fixing them will be similar in that we can create an entirely new curve using the Draw Arc tool. Once you have your arc drawn over a particular section, 
make sure the endpoints are touching the original vector. Now select the original vector and add nodes to the intersection. Now just right click and hit cut vector on either side of the new line. Delete the cutoff portion and then select both the vector and the new arc and hit join vectors. This should incorporate your line into the vector seamlessly. Another way you may want to change your vector is by thickening a portion like with an outline. Usually this is easier to do in a photo editing software before importing, but with an outline, it's sometimes possible to do it right in vCarve. Take Miss Brown here. You may want her to be more prominently outlined. Making the space thicker can give you a deeper cut around the outside of the vector, helping it stand out a bit more. The offset tool is a great option for this. You simply click on the outer line and hit the offset button. Now choose outside and determine how far out you want the line to be. You will lose some detail in this line, so keep that in mind when using this technique. Once you're happy with your new outline, you can delete the old one to avoid confusion when carving. You also want to watch something, like her eyebrows here, that may need to be moved away from the new outline. Sometimes you'll find that certain parts of your vector are carving differently than what you were expecting. Now I want to look at this particular issue with the mermaid. Her eyes are just not carving well at all, so let's look at what we can do to fix that. I think it will look better if we have the small pieces carving out instead of the whole eye. So we need to create another border around the eye. I'm going to use the offset function to give a nice depth to the area surrounding the eye. I may need to move the small pieces inside a bit. Now the eye will carve in a much more subtle fashion. The standalone eye was pretty easy. But now I have to do the same thing with this eye that goes into the outline, which poses a bigger challenge. I'll need to cut the eye area and create an independent shape from it. Now that the eye is cut, I need to use the edit polyline function to close the shape. Once closed, I can offset it just like I did the other eye. Then I will cut again and connect the rest of the vector with my new outline. Fixing your vector can be a very time-consuming task, but the results are usually worth it, giving you cleaner lines and better detail to your carving. Here you can see my simulated carving side by side to see the difference that cleaning it up makes. On the left side we have the vectors I spent so much time cleaning up, and on the other side is an image traced with the default settings. I'm pretty happy with the improvement. Do you have any tips for cleaning up the vector after using the trace bitmap tool? If so, leave them in the comments below so we can all learn together. I've heard your requests for some more basic tool videos, so be on the lookout for those in the future. And until next time, have fun and stay safe in the shop.